Thank you, Aditya. Good afternoon, everybody. So we are talking about customer experience and how it actually, you know, results into retention. So while preparing for this panel, I was recalling any of my instances where I would have had a great customer experience and then it would have resulted in me being retained by that particular brand. So today, of course, we're living in the age of quick commerce. Uh, I'm sure today, given the rise that Blinkit has seen in the last one, one and a half years, we actually first go and search on these quick commerce platforms if we don't get anything there then e-commerce platforms and then probably if not there then you know these brand direct, direct websites so recently my home uh, had some renovation and i had to get curtains now i went to a brand's website the amount of personalization that i was getting there you know after my first order they were able to retain me and you know given how the social media then tracks as to what you're searching and then it shows similar brands. I didn't bother to look at these brands because my experience was so good and they were able to retain. So my uh, question in the you know, opening comments, uh, what I would like to know from my panelists here is that how are these expectations of customers changing? You know, obviously product pricing are the two main stays, right? But beyond these, what are they looking for and how fast are these changing? Akash, if you would like to start first. When you need to buy something, uh, either you go to Google and search it for that. Or the second way is when you are scrolling social media or you are at some website, you get to see some products. So the important is the storytelling, how a brand is able to communicate about its product. What are its USP? What are the features the brand has? And if it's able to connect to the consumer, then there's high chances that the customer will come to website. And once the consumer is in the website, so there's a lot many things a brand can do to uh, check out his experience, uh, how to retain it, whether consumer is buying or not. But the important is the right storytelling, right communication about the product, which will make consumer to just check your product. Let's say if the consumer don't want to buy your product, it's okay. But at least is coming to your website, he's checking out the product, and in his subconscious mind, it has the information about the brand. So uh, I think the foremost thing is how you're able to communicate uh, about your product and its USP. Thank you, Akash. So, the clearly, you know, Akash stating and a lot of emphasis on storytelling. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, uh, I mean, we'll touch upon storytelling deeply as well. But initially, when we are talking about customer expectations and how fast they are changing. Well, thank you for having me. I would say that customer expectations have pretty much been the same. There is, there isn't a difference in the expectation. It's only that the customer uh, cohorts have changed. You know, earlier I would, uh, let's say 20 years ago or 25 years ago, when my mom would go out to the store, her expectation was also good service from the general trade outlet. Mm. Then uh, it got upped because the modern trade outlet started servicing her or servicing her requirements a little better. Mm. You know, today we are the customers. Our expectations are pretty much similar to what the earlier generation also mm. had. I want a product. I want to be heard. I want you to uh, listen to me if I'm giving feedback. And I want you to bring the product which is the best for me. Okay. Um, and I think that fundamentally has stayed the same. same. The okay. delivery mechanisms, the turnaround times have changed. Okay. But customer expectation is the same. You need to ensure that what I need as a customer, you're okay. providing it okay. in the best uh, you know, platform. Sure. So Akash, you, know, you can start by sharing your own experience with your venture as to how personalization is, you know, changes that experience at every touch point. And then, you know, some of the learnings from your own experience that can be replicated from brands, you know, in this space when they are going D2C. Yeah. So, uh, my product is spices. That's a basic food product. And if you go uh, before COVID, so it was mostly a general trade based product or an empty product. I think buying this type of product from online platforms and today 
if quickcom is able to deliver at 10 minutes or maybe less much faster than a gt stores so no one would, would have imagined and when we started uh somewhere i knew that okay e-commerce is growing uh, in different different categories but what about the grocery because it needs fast delivery which is possible only by the general trade where you live you can go to nearby kirana stores and you can buy your product uh how it will change because customer won't wait for 3 days 4 days 5 days normally in apparel so maybe in any personal care a customer can wait but what about the grocery so this was always in my mind that there will be a shift someone will come and maybe find out some way how modern trade did to general trade then e-commerce did to modern trade and then quickcom did to e-commerce i was reading somewhere that big basket was late in entering quick commerce uh, where blinkit has done something amazing so things has changed uh, in so many years uh, when covid came and things started getting changed and consumers started buying through e-commerce so that time we realized okay this time has come i used to think for this that okay when grocery buying will be easy in e-commerce i think covid did that and slowly gradually the big players like flipkart big basket was there then amazon then today blinkit zepto i think they have made everything possible and we entered this category at the right time maybe if someone wants to enter today uh, i think there can be a challenge for a new brand uh, but i think we were lucky enough that we entered at the right time when this changes was happening in the market and that gave us really a good boost uh, first we got our initial success in e-commerce now our major focus is toward quick commerce uh, because uh, like if i can project for 2030 i think quick commerce will be able to surpass e-commerce and that's why today flipkart big basket everyone is trying to enter quick commerce space because there is a user experience now uh, user wants their grocery fast this has become their part and maybe you can say uh, you know this is uh, any way this is good that they are getting their products in 10 minutes but because of all this technology and all this you know startups and platforms everything they are getting at their home they just don't need to move out so it was is is also required uh, to be healthy going out getting the experience but anyway quick commerce is doing something miracle so uh, in our journey i'll say e-commerce and quick commerce this were major you know part which helped us in scaling up especially in spices which was never considered to be a you know e-commerce uh, main, uh, main player right. yeah sure um, you know clearly um, deep you know a lot of thrust on quick commerce i think we'll discuss that towards the end but for your experience your reflections on the personal personalization that i was talking about in the customer experience journey at every touch point what are your reflections from that which you know probably other brands can replicate who are you know trying to go d to c well you know we are into female hygiene products uh known for selling p body and serona toilet hygiene menstrual hygiene products i think what all of us need to realize is uh who is a customer you know most of the times it is seen as the guy who is giving you the money and you you build the business around that person's requirements i believe as a founder you need to have both the sides of the of the spectrum very well catered uh and and the and these two sides are one is internal customer and one is the external customer these two put together would make the customer as a funnel and for both of them the requirement and the personalization strategy has to be very different for an external customer you're looking at somebody who's paying you you know so i have i have a service this person pays me i have a product this person pays me what does this person need this person only needs uh you know a good quality product tomorrow if he or she faces a problem with the product you should hear me that's all right. you know there's not much and everything around your customer care team has to be built on these two principles right. that if there is any issue in the quality if there is anything else that he or she needs we should hear it first right that's they don't need more than that i'm i'm okay if if they don't if my airline doesn't know me my first name mm. 
If they give me a shitty service and they call me, hello, Mr. Bajaj, how are you doing? It doesn't make any flying sugar of a difference to me. Mm -hmm. So for external customer, personalization is saying, if you have a problem, we'll hear you. Everything around that. Uh, external customers also need to be equally, you know, in the focus. So, or maybe, you know, external customers could be the paying customers, internal customers are your team members, your vendors, your shareholders, you know, and for all of them, the personalization is to say, they also just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is create everything around keeping in touch at the core. So if my customer has any feedback as an external customer, I keep in touch, I hear, I take changes. If my team member wants to say something, system and processes have to be built in such a fashion that if they want to say something, the platform should be such where they're heard. Right. If my investor wants to say something, I should be able to, you know, uh, give it enough importance. And similarly for any vendors right. that you might have. So these, this is first of all the customer bucket. These are all customers. Right. And if at all you're a new business, the more you build your business around saying, I will keep in touch with both internal and external customers. The strategies and personalization for each varies and it will evolve. Right. Deep, if you could also touch upon uh, the uh, initial discovery uh, aspect, you know, yeah. because that's the entry point for, you know, any customer sure. for that D2C brand. How do you go about that? So, you know, it's, it's, okay, it's important to look at, just, just map the customer's journey. Where is my customer going? And rather than saying, you know, I'm a D2C brand, can I just go and advertise on Facebook, on Instagram? If the kind of product that you're selling, if that audience is more on Twitter, your strategy needs to be starting from there. If the product is such that they're not online at all, then you need to focus there first, right? In our case, Peabody was a product that, it was India's first stand-in P device for women, coming from men. We were two co-founders, both men. And uh, we were looking at a product that helps women stand in P. You know, so no matter how much did I advertise online, just reading it, if you don't need the product, you don't need the product. So we said when she's running a marathon, when she's pregnant, when she has arthritis, then this, pr this problem becomes very, very, you know, extreme. So for every day we partnered with marathons, concerts. So if you're running a marathon, those portable toilets, so there, you know, you, we created communication around them. We started sampling there. We started talking to doctors to tell women around pregnancy last trimester. Mm -hmm. We started sp speaking to orthopedic doctors to say arthritis may issue. Hota hai. And I think that started working. So uh, the strategy has to be be where your customer is. Okay. In our case, initially it was on, on, you know, it was BTL, then it became medical, then it became marketplaces, then it became quick commerce. Tomorrow, if drones are delivering, we'll deliver through drones. Right. So that's what it right. is. Thank you, Deep Akash. Your thoughts on in this initial discovery aspect, your experience with that? Yeah. So, uh, see, uh, the product in which we were in, that was the product which we have been using from so long. And India is known for its spices. And every brand is uh, has its own identity. So, uh, our purpose was to, you know, start with those products which a consumer can easily buy because they are used to a certain brands and in spices is very most difficult you know to change the consumer taste and preference it's not that they won't change but it will take time how much branding you do how much best product you deliver it's not that uh, they will buy it they want to try your product because in today's time let's say who are buying through e-commerce platform or who are new who, who wants to try new age brands they'll start with one or two products so we had that differentiation that we, we introduced Ziploc packaging in spices where you don't need to keep your spices in the fridge. Mm -hmm. We came up with the technology, cool grind technology where we were grinding spices at a very low temperature due to which the aroma, pungency and oil were get retained as compared to the traditional uh, you know, machines. So uh, we started with that and today I think uh, looking at the scenario and looking at the trust factor in spices, whole spices was such a category which we found out that this is a requirement of the consumer. Maybe they can trust a brand, but still they want to create their own recipe. They want to grind in front of their eyes in their mixer so that they get they are getting the pure, more pure product. So this has been the journey where we started with some. Now we have added one category, and thanks to e-commerce also. E-commerce really help you 
in discovering something uh, which you cannot you know discover maybe through offline easily because you know what customer is searching for and this has been our case that we are able to find this category and maybe our focus is more we we just want customer that whatever they are doing is in front of their eyes they are whatever they are using is uh, alteration free because our category was supposed to be one of the most alterated category so journey has changed we started with something we are trying to add something and it's as per the requirement of the consumer only right akash you know if you could touch upon that part as well which we were discussing about the strategies the different strategies for a brand who may also be going through the retail channel of course then the d2c channel i was giving you examples of amul how the retail strategy is different the d2c strategy is different can you share some insights on that as well yeah so you see we have uh, many platforms to sell our website general trade stores modern trade then e-commerce quick commerce for a brand is is must to be present everywhere if they can if if a brand will start focusing only on its website they are missing the chunks of their sale from the marketplace or from the retail stores or from the mtf maybe it can take time but focus should be how you can present everywhere every platform has its own challenges quick commerce will only keep your those product who are fast moving they won't keep your entire range mtf will also do the same there is space constraint and they'll ask you to give few products but your your, your website has the potential to you know show all your range maybe you, you you can have more than 100 skus so your website can show so it's important for a brand to be present everywhere and your website definitely helps you in showcasing all those product uh maybe some product you cannot sell from e-commerce mta for retailers because they only want the fast moving products but your website can and maybe you can develop that product slowly with the help of your storytelling with the help of your marketing and that product can be in the self after a year or maybe a six month right. so for for a complete strategy you need to present everywhere maybe it can take time but as you scale if you are present everywhere then there's a high chances revenue will go up you will be you will be able to launch various product new products through your website and slowly gradually they will come to the marketplaces and the self very right let's say dakash deep your thoughts on this differential strategy for various channels well, i think akash has covered it fairly well uh, my only one word on that will be wherever your customer is and uh, whatever you can afford start from there uh, you know opening multiple battle fronts becomes challenge unless akash bhai is funding us no 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 but see, e even i said that <laughs> it, it, it might take time we are struggling to you know get into mtf so yeah. they are they are just not allowing us so maybe after 6 months or a year we'll be there but of course yeah wherever you can yeah. where your pockets allow yeah yeah uh, wherever you have reach i think you should start with that only so in our case small example jab shuru mein paise nahi the so not that abhi hai but pehle to bilkul hi nahi the so so we would just send cold emails hundreds of them 200 of them back then they worked uh didn't have much money so all collaborations were barter collaborations uh didn't have much money so you know we were talking to events so it should be you know i mean you can't follow anybody else's playbook play to your strengths if you are somebody who's fantastic with b2b and the market is saying let's do d2c please do b2b you know uh and and go where you believe your customer is is there according to you so i think okay that's all so you know cash for d2c brands the key is also a lot of data that they get yeah. right how is that being leveraged to enhance the ex experience more and how do you see that losing it you know when the customers shift to you know other channels because this is clearly your currency if you could shed some light on that so today's time data is gold and i think the big businesses which we have built which anyone has built during this time i think they might have really played well on the data so data gives you complete insights about the performance of a consumer what's his behavior why is buying your product again and again or why he is not buying it so without data in today technology time i think 
no one can scale up to that level. Uh, it has to be used in a proper way. And with the same data, someone can deliver some different insights, someone can deliver some different insights. So it's on the data mining officer or whosoever is digging that data, it's on them that how they are able to efficiently use that. And I think those who one wants to do D2C and e-commerce, maybe in GT there was not much data that time, but in today's time, I think you can track your consumer each and every move and that's possible. And that's definitely helped you. You don't want all the consumer. Uh, for me, what I planned is if I have a 1 million consumer and if they are buying a 500 rupees average order value product every month, I'll be doing a 50 crore business every month. So if I'm able to reach to that target with the help of data, nothing better than that. So data definitely helps you uh, how you want to scale up, how you, you want your consumer to be, what is behavior to be. And with the help of that, you can definitely reach your target. Sure. Deep, your thoughts on it? Well, I think he's again covered it. Uh, it's, it's just, again, play to your strengths is all I would say again and again. If you are somebody who is fantastic with analytics, mm -hmm. stra over optimize on that. If you are somebody who you believe, like for us, uh, you know, we were, we were built on marketplaces, you know. I realized that my, my strengths and my team's strengths were in listening to the insights that we got from these marketplaces who had far better uh, people uh, early on in our life at least. You know, we could afford a lot of heavy hitters. So we, our strengths were, we'll keep in touch with our marketplace people. If there's any review of the customer which is negative, that'll be heard first. Mm -hmm. If there is anything that is coming around from customer care, we said give the solution first and then investigate and not the other way around. So those were fundamentals around which we had built, right? Uh, but D2C is something that we started very, very late, you know? So when somebody asked me how important is the data, I think it, it, it's not only that only you know, like D2C data is the, is the only way to build it. I would say if your strength lies in any other channel, the, the data of that, you know, mm. you would be able to grasp far better and be able to take out better insights. So focus on that again, again and again, the same thing. Just yeah, I know. <laughs> basically <laughs> on the right. strength. So uh, okay. Thank you. let's focus now since, you know, our discussion from the beginning, every answer, you know, is revolving around quick commerce, right? Dipinder Goel talking about Blinkit becoming bigger than Zomato, Goldman Sachs already valuing Blinkit more than Zomato. So clearly this is the next big thing, right? Big thing, yeah. So how does in this context the future of D2C looks like? You were talking about that maybe Blinkit is charging a higher commission fee, but for D2C brands, more or less you spend that amount on acquiring customer acquisition marketing. So in that context, if you could tell as to what the future holds. See, today's time is all about convenience. Uh, whatever convenience you are giving to a consumer, uh, you see like the Ola, Zometo, maybe today Blanket or any other platforms. Those who are able to deliver the convenience, I think they were able to get the consumer. Quick commerce, when a consumer comes, the intent is very high. Though maybe they are charging high margins but the intent is high when you check at the cost what you spend in the purpose marketing in D2C and in quick commerce you'll see that you're getting better results in quick commerce if you, if you have low average order value like product like us grocery I think quick commerce they form the bulk of what exactly so a consumer is coming they are buying different, different stuffs and they're adding our spices so though our average order value can be 200 to 50 rupees that's not viable in the D2C, but that's viable in the quick commerce. So it depends from product to product. And quick commerce is mostly for the fast moving products, product like us, product which is required in the daily household activities, that not for some fancy products. So definitely quick commerce is growing and it depends which product you are in. Maybe for some products, I think general D2C and e-commerce is good, but for some products, quick commerce is good. So. I think quick commerce is able to provide that co convenience to the consumer and for brand like us, I think be present there with maximum SKUs you can. 
uh, whatever you spend, you get better results. I think nothing better than that. And uh, we try to be uh, present at D2C websites, trying to get the business, but the major focus has shifted from our website to all these e-commerce platform. Sure. Deep, how are you seeing these developments? Uh, so it's a, it's a very powerful channel in the making. Uh, but would I say that it is something which will be relevant for every category? Right. That time will tell. I think you should look at if for your product, let's say you're in jewelry, do I really need it 10 minutes? I don't know. Uh, but for most of the D2C brands. But, but, but you know the kind of products they've started selling? Yeah. They started selling coolers two, three days back. No, but understand oh. why. Yeah. See, they are trying to replace, as far as I see, they are trying to replace your driver and your home mundu. If you want something, you will go to yourself. You know, now if the cooler is bad, if it comes after three days, it doesn't serve my purpose. So it's a very good fit. And if you can create the logistics around it, you know, that you can deliver it that fast, that fast. you know, it, it's a great fit. Mm. But uh, is it for every category? I, I, that time will tell, honestly. Mm. But you know, they're making us, you know, like there was a talk by Simon Sinek where, where he said that, you know, this young generation is so impulsive. You know, we want everything right now, instant gratification. I think Blinkit has done it to everyone. That's right. the first Blinkit or, you know, other quick commerce portals. So how I'm seeing is, again, going back to fundamentals. If my customer is moving here, I am nobody to say, you know, well, it's a fad. You, you move with the customer. Is it changing the e-commerce landscape? landscape? Absolutely. But now customer is everywhere. Today, if she is out in the market and she wants to buy her menstrual hygiene products from a pharmacy, I need to be there. I just can't say that I'll be living under the rock okay. and only be uh, on quick commerce. But if you don't have a lot of money, should you, and if the category is relevant, should you be on quick commerce or marketplace first? I would say quick commerce. Sure. Uh, I would add, like to add one point. As you said, like they have started selling cooler. So it depends. Uh, this summer, so they've added coolers. If it's Rakhi, they'll add Rakhi. If it's Valentine's Day, they'll add roses. If some puja is coming, they'll add all the yeah. products of that, that puja. So you need to understand what they are trying to do. Quick commerce is trying to replace your Kirana stores. They are trying to replace all those uh, street vendors who try to put their stall during all these occasions. So they are just playing smart. They are just converting the unorganized thing into organized thing, which is required in today's time. As India will grow, we'll see the most of the organized sector is changing to organized. And that's the change even we have seen in our category. In India, I think... 80-90% business still comes from the organized market if you go to rural areas. So there's been shift happening. This organized market, they're coming to Kirana stores. Kirana stores is going to modern trade stores, modern trade to e-commerce, e-commerce to quick commerce. So there's a shift happening. And quick commerce is just trying to do that. Right. And I think the biggest market is converting an unorganized market into organized because that's the biggest market in India. And especially even today when someone asks me who is your biggest competitor, rather saying any brand name, I say this organized market. If I'm able to get a little bit share of this organized market, I think I'll reach to my target, which we have foreseen for the next four, five years. So yeah, so they are just doing the right thing, which is required in India. Very rightly said, gentlemen. My last question to you, thoda philosophical ho jana. But three point mantras that you would like to give a sum up for D2C brands when we are talking about this particular topic, especially retention. So see, first, uh, any product that needs to be checked, whether it can be a proper D2C brand or it can be a marketplace brand. First thing, uh, if you're a product like us and if you're trying to you know, scale in D2C, there's high chances that you won't be able to scale that much. So product fit needs to be checked for the platform. There's a product fit which has to be checked for the consumer also, for the market also. But in today's time, you need to check the platform also that, okay, if it's suitable for that platform or not. Spending money in performance marketing and believing that, okay, if I'll spend, I'll get the result. I think that's not always true. So, uh, because there was a conception that, okay, you spend this much, you'll get that business. And I think uh, uh, for new brand, if you'll see, most of the agency will start pitching, okay, we'll, we'll give you this ROAS and all. I think that is not always possible. Uh, there has to be strength, then this performance marketing works really well. And if you are starting a D2C brand, you need to check whether 
this category already already existed or this is a new category so that also need to be checked in our case it was a existing category so we knew we had to fight the generated market but in some products uh, i think like product like yours i think d2c or market place is the right place because you need this product you can easily go and search in the google maybe most of the general trade stores want have this so products needs to be checked and uh, where you are selling it i think that will make make the major difference thank you akash deep what would be your words of advice for people uh, no advice <laughs> too far away from it three things if because you said yeah. so i would say expand the definition of the customer include internal external number 2 be wherever those two customer sets are number 3 listen to all the customers those three and we are done right thank you so much do we have any questions from the audience <laughs> No thank you so much can we please have a big round of applause for all of our analysts thank you